Hi, my name is George Garcia, and I'm your community manager with Fusion 360 Electronics in Eagle. In the final video in this series on the signal integrity extension of Fusion 360, I want to show you how you can extract the parameters from the simulation and then use those to do a transient sim in Fusion 360. So what are the parameters that I'm talking about? Well, in transmission line theory, it's possible to model a transmission line using combinations of resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Now, if you wanted to get very fancy, you could actually use every single individual segment and then simulate each one to build up the full transmission line. Now, that's quite a bit of work, and maybe to get initial insight is more than needed. What you can do, though, is you can click here on the download button, and you can export your simulation results as a CSV file. And then you can take it into Excel, get some averages, and then using the average values, we're going to go ahead and simulate the behavior of this as a transmission line. So let's go ahead and check out the simulation in the schematic. So in this schematic, what I've done is using the parameters from the signal integrity simulation, I've made a lumped element model of the transmission line. Now, a lot of this is going to be hand wavy because we're not going to go into details into the derivation of these formulas and where they come from. But suffice to say that a transmission line can be accurately modeled by having a sufficient number of these RLC sections. Now, those of you who are familiar with this type of simulation know that usually there's also a resistor in parallel with that capacitor to represent the dielectric loss. Now, because the signal integrity extension doesn't give us that information directly, and it's something that would be more related to the layer stack manager, I didn't choose to include it in this simulation. With that said, it's important to keep in mind that this is an approximation of an, of an ideal transmission line. Okay, so our real transmission line is going to behave similar to this, but don't expect this to be 100% accurate. So what I've done is, I wanted a simulation to be accurate to around 2.5 gigahertz. So I used this formula that I obtained from one of the references in the first video. To calculate that, I need about 5 sections to give me a simulation that is accurate up to that bandwidth. Now, from the signal integrity simulation, from the extension, I got the resistance, the inductance, and I calculated the capacitance based on the time delay of the transmission line and the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Now, like I mentioned, we could use the, we can export the values in CVS form, which is what I did to get that average impedance, characteristic impedance. So once we have those numbers, and we determine that we need at least five sections, we divide them by the number of sections we need to spread them out. Because remember, when you do the total, when you do the simulation, I got these values as the total for the entire segment. When you use a total, if you just had the total, it would be one LC segment, and that's not going to be accurate over the whole behavior of the transmission line, because as we know, these resistances, inductances, and capacitance are distributed along the entire length of the trace. So again, this is just an approximation. I want to keep emphasizing that. It's an approximation. It's just to get an idea of what the transient waveforms may look like. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding our transmission line, our USB line. I'm feeding it basically a high-speed square wave running at about 500 megahertz, um, which is about the speed of USB 2.0. And it would basically be a series of zeros uh, if, if we were to, to really be technical about it. But it's a good worst case scenario for what's going to be traveling down the line. You'll notice that I have the input impedance of the source is 45 ohms at R13. And I have a load at the end of 45 ohms also just so we can keep the transmission line balanced and it's going to see the impedance it wants to see. So at this point, we can just use a simulate function. I want a transient. You don't have to tamper too much with the different parameters here. The only thing you want to make sure is that you set the start and end time. A 500 megahertz square wave has a period of about 2 nanoseconds. I want 5 waveforms to analyze, so I put the end time at 10 nanoseconds. So I'm going to hit simulate. 
And you're going to see now that we have all these waveforms. We have the current, and we have the uh, schematic that we can look, and it'll highlight depending on where we're at. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Minimize the schematic because I want to see this a little bit clearer. I'm going to put them separate. But what you can see is, even though we do have a little bit of reflections, they actually steady out pretty quickly. You can see that towards the end of each waveform, it's actually pretty flat. And additionally, because this is a digital, a digital signal, we know that there's still plenty of headroom to be able to detect the zero and the one correctly. So, again, this is just an, an idealized simulation of the transmission line, but it's something you can do when you get those parameters from the signal integrity extension. It's one of the things that you can play with. So, thank you for watching this series. Thank you for sticking with us the whole way through. It is our true desire that you benefit from the signal integrity extension, that you make the best of it, and that it really saves you time and money in going to market with your consumer products. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.